Hello, my fellow Ripplers. This is Chris Miles, your cash flow expert and anti financial advisor. Welcome to our show. It's for you, those that work so hard for your money and you're ready for your money, start working harder for you right now. You want that freedom and cash flow today. You don't want to have to wait 30 or 40 years from now, but you want it right now so you can live that life that you love with those that you love. But most importantly, guys, not it's not just about getting rich. It's not just about getting out of the rat race and having been financially independent. More importantly, it's about creating wealth. It's about allowing you to be able to create a ripple effect through the lives of those around you. And that's the beauty of this, guys, that the bigger, the more prosperous you become, the more free you become, the more liberated you are, the greater blessing you can be in the lives of those around you. So thank you so much for tuning in, allowing me to share that ripple effect through you. Thank you for tuning in. You've been binging. You've been sharing with others. And uh, we couldn't express enough gratitude for what you guys have been doing because you really are the best listeners, and we really appreciate it. As a reminder, if you haven't done so already, go to our website. Well, there's moneyripples.com. There's a passive income calculator that you can actually go and take to find out just exactly in your situation how much passive income you could create in the next 12 months. So I'd love to be able to get the feedback, hear what you guys are getting. If it's definitely something that's a higher number, there's action that needs to be taken. So guys, definitely go and check that out today. Chris Miles was able to retire twice by the time he was 39 years old, but he's not content to just enjoy his own financial freedom and peace of mind. Chris wants you to have your own ripple effect so you can live free today. He's not the financial advisor you expected. He's the anti-financial advisor you deserve. He's jumping behind the mic right now, ready to make waves. Here's Chris Miles. All right, so I've brought on a special guest today, uh, someone that you may not have heard of, but I definitely have, uh, Eric Benetti. Uh, Eric is actually one of our clients here in Money Ripples. Uh, many of you guys always keep asking me, okay, how does this, you know, what's this actually look like when the rubber hits the road? How do people actually create passive income? So you hear me talk about the concepts all the time, but I figured it'd be really valuable, just like we do, you know, about usually about at least once a month, bring on somebody who actually has been there and now doing it. So you can kind of get that, that feel. A little background on Eric, um, besides just being an awesome guy, I know I, him and I have been talking back and forth, whether it's through email or phone or Zoom or whatever for the last few years. Um, the one thing that's amazing about Eric is that he actually went into the field that I was planning to go into. Uh, he went into organizational psycho psychology, worked for uh, Xerox for uh, for s several decades, a couple decades there, and then now as a consultant, <laughs> uh, be able to help companies and consult with them and, and things of that nature. He's now empty nested someplace that I'm still hoping to become someday. <laughs> if we can never get our 5 million children out. Um, definitely. Uh, he's empty nested. They got their dog um, living a wonderful life and definitely a big focus on not just the money, but especially I love that he has a focus on health, longevity, uh, and just happiness within his family. So Eric, welcome to our show. Thanks, Chris. It's a pleasure to be here. It's taking us, as you know, taking us a while to make this happen. So I'm looking forward to our conversation today. And I had no idea that you wanted to be an IO psychologist. So that, that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, I told people I always go into business consulting, right? But I actually was going to organizational behavior, was going to get my MBA and that yeah. and and try to consult companies, tell them what they're doing wrong so I can walk out with a big paycheck and they can exactly. fix their, you know, <laughs> their employees and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you took the path that I almost took myself. That's great. Yeah. yeah. We have to share some more stories sometime. <laughs> For sure. Well, tell us more about you. I mean, give us more about your background and how you were raised, you know, growing up, even just uh, with your career and everything, just your your yeah. life path here. I guess um, I guess what most people would say it's sort of an interesting upbringing. Um, it was just just life. But uh, my my father was a physician. He's passed now. But the interesting part of it was he was married nine times. So wow. um, eight, eight women, one of them he married twice. Don't ask me why, but he did. Uh, and so, you know, that was, as I got older, uh, he and I were always best friends. So it wasn't like it damaged the relationship or anything. Uh, but, um, you know, I just learned to appreciate him for who he was. And I think it helped me uh, try to appreciate others in life in a, in a different way, even though they may not have the same perspective or values that I do. You know, I, I was just the opposite. I wasn't going to get married till I got my education out of the way. And I was I was uh, what I call kind of uh, situated, if you will, and stable. And I was only going to do it once. And that was it. Right. But, um, you know, life's not that easy. So anyway, um, 
that's from a family side. Most people would say that was not a normal upbringing, but it never felt that way. It felt just the opposite. The, um, you know, and the, you mentioned I worked for Xerox for 20 years. I got my PhD in IO psychology, and then I went to work for Xerox, and I worked in the U.S. and abroad for a few years as well, which was a great experience, and and then shifted into the uh, HR OD kind of consulting, and have been doing that for the last 15 years. Uh, my amazing. wife, Gigi, uh, is someone that I've known pretty much all my life. We actually went to high school together, and in high school, I dated her best friend. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we went our separate ways, and then after both being divorced, 32 years later, we came back together and ended up being married. So, yeah, we've been together for a while now. So wow. uh, life is funny, the twists and turns it takes. <laughs> so you can't really say you married your high school sweetheart. You married your your high school sweetheart's friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She was I always in and out of our house. You know, I just knew her as a another one of the gang, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But we, um, yeah, it was interesting. I had a work gig in uh, Boise, Idaho, and I was living in Charlotte, North Carolina at the time. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew she, she and I had connected through Facebook, which I don't even do anymore. But um, at the time, we were friends on Facebook. And I reached out to her and said, Hey, guess what, I'm coming to Boise for some work. And she said, Well, let's get together. And um, we had dinner and it was like 32 years previous It never, never skipped a beat. And we've been together ever since. So it was awesome. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Where do you guys live now? We live in the uh, Phoenix area, Tempe. Yeah. Tempe area. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah now we've been there tell us like, obviously you were going down this corporate path, like many have, and even many that are listening to the show right now. When did you first start to think, okay, I need to get my mind around doing something different. Like maybe trying to do the whole, get out of the rat race, you know, something yeah. more in the alternative investment space. What, what really turned that on for you? Um, maybe a combination of things. I think, you know, I've always had an interest in investing. I've just It's just something I've always found fascinating. I love reading about, you know, great uh, uh, historical, I'll call uh, investors, you know, the mm -hmm. John Templeton's of the world and the mm -hmm. Warren Buffett's and, that everybody knows. And um, uh, even more common, uh, or maybe some folks that some folks don't know, uh, like uh, Howard Marks, who started Oak Tree Capital. He's a brilliant financial mind. Uh, has a wonderful newsletter every month or so. Um, anyway, I've always been fascinated by it. I've always kind of uh, stuck my toe in the water and dabbled with stocks and bonds, more so with stocks. Bonds, I never really fully understood until I got a little older. Uh, but it was always from the standpoint of a, accumulation. I never really thought about it from a um, an income perspective. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, you're working, you've got the income you need. You didn't it just never really occurred to me that maybe I needed to think differently about that as I progressed through different phases of life and it really started uh, to become resonate with me more in, in the last few years as my wife and I started thinking more about, you know, we don't want to do this forever. She's she's still working. She's talking about retiring this year. I still like what I do in a way that um, I think I can still add value. And um and I don't have to work that hard to make a decent, you know, dollar. Mm -hmm. I, I, the problem with my work is I'm always on the road. So it does impact my life in a, in a, a significantly detrimental way at times because I don't have enough time at home. Mm -hmm. And so that's the big downside for me. And it's when I got to the point where I said, I just don't want to do this all the time. I don't want to be living in a hotel um, that I really started thinking more about, OK, I've got a shift we've got to shift from accumulating money to how are we going to draw that money and, and you know, live off of it or uh, try to work, make it work more for us mm -hmm. as, as opposed to us working for it. And, um, you know, it was just a mindset uh, set change. And I, when I became introduced to you initially and you and I started talking and you exposed me to some potential opportunities that, you know, I had no idea anything about, you know, and I uh, had never really um, gotten into this space, a private equity type of investments. And I became more intrigued about it and realized that this is a this is a time of life where we need to start shifting how we think about things and how we're utilizing our money. Um, right. Not to get too long winded on it, but I, 
uh, I read a book not too long ago too that really impacted my thinking. It's called Die With Zero. I don't know if you've heard of that one. Um, a gentleman who wrote it, I think, don't correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, Bill Foster, I believe is his name. And he's a former hedge fund manager, and maybe still is. But it's a really interesting book that I had always been raised that you save, 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 you earn, 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 mm -hmm. and then you die and you know everything gets passed to your heirs, right? And you're saving to almost build up this, this pot of money that other people are going to then enjoy and you know benefit from. Mm -hmm. And I watched my grandfather die after, you know, from a stroke after working all his life and hardly ever even taking a vacation. I watched my father die from a stroke and, you know, he was semi-retired at the time. And I said, you know, that's, I don't want that. And um, I don't want to go that way. And uh, I want to start enjoying life. And that book really shifted my way of thinking because it's not so much that he's, he's act actually saying you should die with zero. Mm -hmm. He's saying you should start to think about how you're going to spend your money at some point you've accumulated enough. And now it's time to shift to thinking about how can I spend this money and actually start providing money to my heirs now so they can use it as they need to in different phases of their life versus dying. And then they're 60 years old and they've got all, all this money that they're probably never going to utilize. Um, it, and I thought, he's right. You know, that's it just, I need to shift my mindset. So it really got us thinking more deeply about it. And that's kind of where I, I transitioned to more of an income based type of approach and uh, have very little money in the market these days. Very little. And that's probably good, especially after 2022 it was kind of brutal, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. And I, back in 2018, and I posted this on the, um, on the ripples uh, forum, uh, maybe a month or two ago, somebody asked a question about precious metals and I, you know, provided my two cents. I know you read it because you commented um, and so did Craig, but uh, about 2018, I got into precious metals because I thought at that time the crash was coming, but nobody could tell you when, of course, no one does have a, a, a crystal ball. But I was preparing for that. So I started shifting money into gold and silver and, and investments related to that and still have it uh, sitting there because it's done so well. And it's and it protected us during the during last year. We we actually ended up about one percent ahead on the year versus people losing 20, 30 um, percent. And so that, important. you know, that doesn't account for your income and you know, private equity investments because you don't know what the returns are on some of those things uh, initially. Right. So. That's fantastic. Now, if I recall, I think the very first time you and I got connected was through Brian Fouts, who was a previous yep. guest on this podcast. Right? Yeah, With I think Elevation you're right. Group. That's right. That's yeah. right. In fact, I think our first conversation was even about just infinite banking, but then it That's kind of evolved right. from there into the investing yeah. side, wasn't it? Which is one thing that we haven't done, you know, and I know that I need to, Craig and I went with, worked with Parker and got quite far down the path yeah. and then decided you know what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it at this moment in time, because we were trying to do some other stuff with the money. But I, I need to go back and, and work with Craig and Parker to revisit that, because we still want to establish a, a policy or two that way. Yeah, I definitely see the benefits from. It. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, what, what was what were some of the with the investing side of things too? All right. What were some of the obstacles or even just the maybe the challenges mentally for you to have to shift? Because obviously, like you said, you've been in that accumulation mindset shifting to that that income passive income type mindset is very although it shouldn't be very different it's such a night and day difference uh, mm -hmm. what what were some of the challenges you had and how you, how were you able to overcome that to bridge that gap and say now i see it i'm look at my money differently what was that for you for me fear of the unknown you know mm -hmm. and and i say that in the sense of your investments are through the stock market in our minds we believe at least and i did because mm -hmm. i would study stocks and I'd study companies that I thought I was interested in and so forth. And I thought through that type of analysis, I could determine what's a good investment, right? Or what's yeah. going to be a safe, high quality investment that might throw off a dividend every month or quarter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can earn some income that way. Um, and there's, there's truth to that, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's what got me over the hump. I had 
had done a little bit of private equity investment prior to coming to uh, meet you and your team. There were two multifamily investments that are in my backyard in the Phoenix Valley. They were sort of mm -hmm. no-brainers when you looked at them as value-add multifamily in that market, just because of the way that that market was growing and, and continuing to grow. And the demographics were, were very favorable. Um, we're still invested in those, but those aren't income investments, right? They're mm -hmm. they're meant to be uh, value add and then flip it and, and earn some you know uh, return from from that flip. Um, the and we also did a, a very small investment in a ground up apartment complex in Park City, which um, seemed like a no brainer to me too. You know, and, and just based on locale and, and the growth in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a small, very small investment too in a medical office type of portfolio. So, which seemed low risk as well, but none of those are income investments, you know? And so that was my exposure. And I realized I'm putting all this money into either stocks or these types of really growth types of uh, investments, but I'm not doing anything to rebalance it into getting me closer to my goal of not working so doggone hard and right. spending more time with my wife and my dog and, and traveling and doing things that we want to do as life experiences that we haven't done. And so um, it, it's partially that type of change in mindset. It was partially knowing with confidence that you guys had vetted uh, these sponsors prior to even bringing them to the to us as potential investors. You're saying this is an opportunity you know, to consider. Um, and it's partially getting to a point in life where my dad used to tell me all the time, I'm sorry, if, you know, you can, you can delete this if, if it's not the right thing to say, but blurb it out, uh, shit or get off the pot, son. You know, that's what he would say. And, you know, that's where I was. It's like, it's time to do that. Either you got to make a decision. Are you going to start taking this seriously or are you just going to do what you've always done? So that's, that's what resonated for me. No, it's, it's a very true statement. My dad's actually said the same thing to me before too. Yeah. So it's, I, I can resonate that quite, quite a bit. So, yeah. Well, and that was going to be kind of my, leading to my next question for you is, I mean, there are some people right now because you, you turn on the news and you can't tell if it's a recession or if it's a boom time because the government says everything's great and we got the lowest unemployment ever. But then we got other people saying, hey, there's so much going on in the markets, real estate settling down, the stock market's not sure where it's going. There's a lot of uncertainty. So I know there's there are several people watching this right now, maybe kind of like you were, where you're like, which, how do I, you know, where do I turn? Right. Like, or is it even the yeah. right time right now? What would you say to them, knowing what you know now and having been, you know, in that place before? What would you say to somebody today here in 2023? What would you say about investing right now? Um, yeah, it's a scary time in a lot of ways. But you know, if you if you have a historical point of view. Uh, to the markets um, and just to life in general, you realize every generation that preceded us has said the same thing for some reason, right? Mm -hmm. We always think our, our time is different, but really there isn't much new and different under the sky, uh, under the sun when it comes to markets. There's always risk. There's risk associated with any investment, you know, I'll give you a perfect example. Like, what did I do right before the Ukraine war started? I invested in Russia <laughs> in a fund, in an ETF. Well, hey, that was a brilliant idea. Um, and then the then that fund got locked by the government. And you couldn't trade on it. And then I, you know, lost every dime I put in there. Um, but you live and learn. It is, you know, that's just the nature of life. And um I have learned too with these investments that we're talking about today, the type of investments that you and um, your team bring forward, you have to have patience. They don't pay out from day one. They're not going to, you know, it doesn't work that way. It's not the structure of the investment. Um, and so you have to, you have to have some trust. You have to, um, um, have some patience. And as an example, we made, um, and I was talking to you just before we came on. Um, and then we also did a, a car wash portfolio through passive income. You know, we've done those six investments through Money Ripples, uh, bringing those to us. And they're all at different stages, right? And mm -hmm. 
you know, and um, it's just something that's you, you got to have some patience and realize this is this is going to build and it's going to um, over time it'll it'll accumulate the the uh, monthly income that you're looking for. And we're point, still picking yeah, our spots. We want to do some right? other things. At some point, you got to take the plunge and have some faith. And um, and then once you see start, you start to see the rewards come out of that. It makes it easier. Yeah. That's yeah. I was saying that's a great point because even somebody decides to get off the pot, say next year, they may still have to wait another six months before they actually see some real results. And that's after it's they've already be next year. gone and got yeah. comfortable, got to know those operators or those you know those people doing those deals. I mean, you might be yep. waiting another year. So you might be exactly. waiting a year and a half, two years if you just keep delaying and keep procrastinating, where even if you took action right now, you could be easily waiting until late 2023 before you exactly. actually start to see that money coming in and, and getting that momentum that most people are missing out on right now. The thing that the other thing that helped me at least is I, I did a little bit of analysis on okay, well, what's our net worth? Um and how much money do we really need? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and, you know, you make some assumptions, you know, the, there's tools out there that can help you model, obviously, based on how long you think you're going to live and that kind of stuff, uh, and how you want to spend your money and quote, unquote, retirement, uh, you're going to front load that spending, you're going to back load it, you know, how much mm -hmm. do you want to save and pass on all those kinds of things you can model, right? and do some projections. And I did that. And, you know, it gave us an intelligent way to look at the reality of the situation and, and feel more comfortable that we have enough money. You know, that's not the issue. The issue is, what are we doing with it to earn the income so it's working for us to live versus me and my wife working a job to continue to earn more income to live? And I, it's just... Um, that's the shift in mindset, you know, that really kind of got us over the hump. Yeah. That's a good point. By the way, yeah. congratulations to, uh, to your wife, you know, you guys would be able to get her to retire by the end of this year. sounds like, and yeah, sooner the better. <laughs> <laughs> she probably feels the same way. I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She likes to do artwork and, um, she does, uh, encaustic art. I don't know if you're familiar with that medium, but it's uh, wax based. It's really cool. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, she wants to do that full time, and I, I keep telling her, do it. I mean, she's selling her stuff on Instagram and that way, but and Facebook. But uh, it's like make it a business if you want to make it a business, or just have fun with it, whatever you want to do. So she's, yeah. that's what gives her joy. So, well, and I know you're kind of at the point too. You're not really looking just to retire. You're looking to be work optional because you love what you do as well. But it's nice to know you have that option to work yeah. or not to work. Yeah. Um. Exactly. You know, and I think we started thinking more about what are some life experiences that we haven't achieved, not the right word, but experience yeah. <laughs> things that we want to do that we haven't experienced. Uh, a, a good example would be my wife wants to walk the Camino de Santiago in, you know, Spain and Portugal, right? The Me famous pilgrimage walk uh, or some some part of it, at least. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm 62 years old. I mean, at at some point, and I keep in shape, but at some point, I'm going to be too old to even want to do that. So, mm -hmm. and that's not that far in the future, probably. So, is it realistic to think you can put that off till you're 75, 80, and still be healthy enough to do it? That's a gamble, right? I'd rather yeah. do it now. And uh, you know what I'm saying. So, it's starting to think about that. You know, what are the things that we would could could wait to do later in life? Uh, when you're potentially less mobile, but still able to do it versus the things that you'd want to take advantage of now while you're still healthy and um, perfectly, you know, fit enough to do those kinds of things. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of my bucket list items as well. You know, you got to yeah. block off that good minimum 30, 40 days just to yeah. do that. You want to do the entire walk, right? All the way to the Portugal coast. And yeah, you know. there was a good article in the New York Times um that i read maybe this weekend i can't remember now oh you'd know the actor oh shoot i'm blank on his name now um but he's done it twice and he's he's fairly he's probably about you know my age or maybe a little bit younger but um he's done it twice and he did it recently with his son who um is just graduated high school i think or in college 
Wow. And he said, it, you know, he was talking about how it was such a life changing experience to do that with his son and his son after the walks, they they did the whole thing, I think. His son said, that's the only 10 out of 10 life experience I've ever had, dad. Wow. And it was like, wow, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love it. Well, Eric, I appreciate you being on, um, you know, I, I, such great value, so many good nuggets of wisdom you have here, especially with what you've experienced already. What would be like one last piece of advice you give to people here? Boy, I wish I had some good advice for somebody. You know, I would say, do what you love. You know, time, life is short and um, it goes faster. It seems like the older we get and do what you love. Otherwise, what's the meaning? You know, completely agree. Yeah. Well, Eric, again, appreciate your time on today and great experiences, of course. And uh, yeah, it's it's been a pleasure to have you on. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully somebody will get some benefit out of what we've chatted about. So. Guaranteed. I, I can already tell. <laughs> I look forward to meeting so. some of the Ripplers in San Antonio at the conference. Same here. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, so everybody, yeah, I mean, I love, I love the advice it says you can either just, you know, keep sitting or get off the pot, right? You know, that's really what it's about. It's, you know, you have the choice, you have the power, you have the control to do it. Um, when it feels right, go for it. You know, even if it, even if it's scary, that leap, it might be worth it. You never know. So anyways, guys, obviously you can always reach out to us. If you have any questions, moneyripples.com, go and make it a wonderful and prosperous week and we'll see you later. 